Typically when an automaker unveils a concept car, it'll be months, even years before I am allowed to get behind the wheel of it. Audi decided, you know what? Let's put some people behind the wheel of the new Audi e-tron GT. And you know, here I go. It's going to, it's nerve wracking because it's new, but how could you pass up this opportunity? So we're, I, we're in the car, we've got it started. It's EV, so of course it's quiet. And then the gear selector is actually just, it's a, a gear stone. And I'll just push it back. It's red, that means it's drive. I believe we're ready to go. Typically when you get in a car like this, unless it has to do with propelling, steering, or stopping the vehicle, it doesn't work. In the e-tron GT concept, even the climate control is working. So down here, it, you can you notice the usual Audi fonts, but you also have this nice little place to put your sunglasses. And the volume is in a great place because it's right where your hand would sit. And of course, you have the drive select, which has always been there in most Audis for a while. What I enjoy in this vehicle are these seats. Now, they're cloth, and a lot of people will be like, oh, you know, I want leather. I'm, I'm not a big fan of leather seats. I actually prefer cloth seats. And the fibers that they're using in this vehicle, they're actually recycled fishing nets. So you get the cloth seats and you get the warm, fuzzy feeling inside your belly that you're doing good for the planet. And uh, I've been told that this steering wheel is pretty much close to being uh, design finished as long as, uh, as well as these recuperation buttons or paddles. Um, you know, I really like the start stop on the steering wheel. All the media controls are right here. I'm not quite sure what these are yet, but I'm sure when this car goes into production, it'll be something important, probably controlling the, the, uh, the cluster gauge. The dash cluster is also slightly different than your typical Audi. It's cleaner and more EV focused. Locking and unlocking the car is also very concepty. So this vehicle right now is about 95% ready to go into production. They still have to work in the suspension, which is why I'm being very careful uh, around holes. But, you know, and they have to add door handles. Right now it just has a little light that you push and the doors pop open, which is beautiful and magical. And there's no way US regulators will let it on the road. The infotainment system looks like it's an updated uh, version of the MMI system, but it's still basically the same thing. Um, it's black and white, which I actually kind of like. I know the MMI, it's, it's very important to have the colors that match with the certain, oh, get some bumps over here. They have the colors that match with certain features, but I don't, I'm, I'm really digging this, this black and white look right now. While we were driving in downtown Los Angeles, we had a police escort to make sure this one of a kind vehicle wasn't damaged. While the car itself is mostly done, the suspension wasn't up to par with the rest of the vehicle. It was set to show off the low profile, and I was asked to make sure I didn't hit any potholes. The recuperation, the recuperative braking on this vehicle is turned on, which means up to 0.3 Gs. When I depress the brake, it's actually using the engines and recuperating engine energy back to the battery. So that's actually pretty nice, especially for a concept vehicle. And in the real world, it means, if you're, especially if you're just driving around town, you might not use the brakes that much, which is great because you won't have to swap them out. And that's the Audi e-tron GT. This car is 95% done. In 2021, we'll probably have a production version I'll be able to drive and I'll get more of a taste of what it's like to be behind the wheel. But right now, I am really enjoying this car and I'm really looking forward to seeing what Audi can do with it.